Hello, mortals, and welcome to episode two of season two of Dice Ex Machina, one that I am calling A Splash of Heroism. Uh, we are joined, of course, with our amazing and fantastic looking cast, which is double tonight. Look at this amazing look that Omega has brought to the table. I, everyone else, we are all humbled and, and, <laughs> and, and brought low by the cosplay glory that is this look. I am, I am obsessed. Uh, let's go around the table and say hello to everybody. Uh, just say who you are and just tell us who your character is and who they worship or do not worship, as the case may be. Uh, hello, we'll start with, uh, let's start with uh, our newbies this week. Let's start with Joy. Hello, Joy. Uh-oh. <laughs> I was so ready to not go at first. Got <laughs> <laughs> on your toes. Hi, I am um, Curious Joy, and I am playing Marifine, who is a bard. <laughs> and at first, she is definitely seeing off footage, but she has a mission to uncover her friend her mother and friends murderer Ooh. Ooh. yes haha -ha. i have so, and i think i kept saying marifine last week so i'll make sure marifine is how it's pronounced i apologize it's for that. you know mm -hmm. either way it's fiend right all right uh, <laughs> uh wow. and then let's let's just look at the let's just let's just like not even do a show and just stare at this at this amazing wig hello mega how are you <laughs> Oh, that's messy. Hi, uh, my name is Omega Jones, also known as the Critical Bard, and I've been doing this today since the last two hours, so it's fine. <laughs> uh, uh, and today, <clears throat> I am Zindar, the half Gorgon artificer wizard, um, who is in Neil Lantern. Uh, uh, you know, right now, kind of confused as to why some person stole things, but um, there's a friend now in Lysandros a little bit maybe. And we're going to see what happens from here. Uh, but that's me. All right. Let's say hello to friends, uh, friends old and new and delightful and all that stuff. Say hello, Jordan. Hi, everybody. My name is Jordan Pridgen, and I am playing Lysandros, who is a satyr and also a rogue and uh, has kind of a, a on again, off again, abusive relationship with Phoenix. Um, uh, but also a little bit with Clothies for a while there. It, it was kind of all over the place. But uh, he is best friends with uh, Marfine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's just canonically true, right? Absolutely. No. I mean, no. <laughs> yeah, Kelly, you can dinner no. for a week. Yes, you, he, he no. has. <laughs> oh, we'll, we'll see. Okay, we can table this discussion. <laughs> I like how subtly, like a she's all that plot broke out. Like, I can make anybody my friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like exactly what happened. Not me. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, Lysandros is dealing with uh, having enormous amounts of debts, which used to be um, breaking fate and now is just inconvenient. Uh, but luckily he has a lot of money to uh, deal with those enormous amounts of debts with. So we'll see how all that goes. Excellent. And last, but certainly not least, let's say hello to Ashlyn. Hello, everyone. I'm Ashlyn, and I'm playing a Leonin fighter named Callista. Uh, she is a Icono class, and she was recently, but no more, serving the god Erebos. Uh, she was in servitude to him uh, for a debt for helping kill her sister. And uh, she has now served off that debt uh, in season one. And uh, now she's kind of figuring things out now that she no longer has to serve a god and kind of hates all gods and is just, yeah, figuring out life. Uh, somehow runs into Lysandros way more than she expected to after uh, parting ways and uh, has now found herself uh, in a group of people and uh, waiting to see what happens. So, yeah. You're saying Callie, we could say, is a strong, capable Leona who don't need no God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. 
Excellent. All right. Well, that is our crew. Yeah, we talked about we talked about the stuff tonight with before the stream with uh, with Jordan with what's going on with Lysandros and Phoenix and Clothis because we kind of left it up in the air during the the charity show, the Trevor Project show, the Mamma Mia episode. But I think that since a few months have gone by, mm -hmm. I think that makes a lot of sense that like Clothis was like you're like 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 you flirted with another possibility, but you got back together with your ex eventually because you just felt comfortable with him and yeah. Yeah, if, Perfect. for instance, Lysandro somehow had, like, a spiritual god baby, he wouldn't know which god was the father and would have to invite them all to uh, a big dance thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm messing up the plot, but you get it. It's a Mamma Mia reference. <laughs> it would be, it would, of course, we would, we would say, we would go, Mamma Mia, here we go again. Yes. And we would have a whole other episode dedicated <laughs> to that exact same joke. <laughs> Again, All again. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and we have Lily James instead of Meryl Streep this time around. It'd be fantastic. Anyway, so now we shall begin. We will pick up exactly where we left off, which is in a small uh, market square in the evening hours. You have chased <laughs> down a woman who you initially thought was your for your friend D, who you have not seen since that day on that island. Um, she pickpocketed Marifine. You have returned Marifine's goods to her. Uh, it was a bag containing uh, a scarf that mattered very much to her. I don't know if she's revealed that information to anybody else, but that's what the audience knows about it. So we will be beginning with that. Um, and I don't think that I named... Oh, actually, before we get uh, we have a toast, but it's a very important toast because it's an announcement. Actually, I think I forgot to do a bunch of announcements at the beginning of the show. So we will... <laughs> let's so do all those first. <laughs> let's do all those first before we get into the show. However, uh, thank you to a donation from Definitely Not Phoenix with a Mustache uh, who <laughs> gave us a <laughs> toast, but we are upgrading it to a very special top of the show announcement because we want to say a very happy birthday to Lord Domwell Zookington III. Hello. Yay. Happy birthday, Dom. Happy birthday. Woo -woo. Happy birthday. That's all I know. All right. So uh, <laughs> that is, I don't, the other song is copywritten and we're on Twitch. So uh, that is a uh, happy birthday, Dom. So congratulations to our, congratulations for not dying this year to our, our Renevit Overlord, Dom Zook. So congratulations. And then we have, uh, of course, our top of the show uh, notes that we have to read through. And then we'll get into that storyline we were just talking about. Uh, we are aiming uh, with a goal for $250 for the episode. Uh, when we hit $250, it allows us to continue to pay this amazing cast and keep content like this on the air for the channel. So even if you can't afford to back us with that $250, please spread the word and share the stream with friends and family. Subscribe, all those kind of things to help us work and stay around. Uh, as a bonus incentive, if we do hit $250 tonight, you will unlock a live pool from an active Magic the Gathering deck, and I will use it least one of the cards in the adventure next week so it's part of a real cool way that you can influence the show and add a bit of chaos to our our godliness uh a tip of just 15 dollars will allow you to send us a message which we'll read live on the air like i just did with that toast uh we're calling it a message from the gods so you can send us a goofy or heartfelt message and you can help crush our fundraising goals all in one and now i'll pass it over to jordan and we also want to give a big thanks to our season sponsors, Roll20 and Hero Forge, for supporting us. And a special shout out to tonight's episode sponsor, Noble Knight Games. You know, we also have a partnership with Die Hard Dice. You can save 10% at Die Hard Dice using the code Saving Throw Show at checkout. Use command exclamation point DH Dice in chat for links and info. And you can order our friend Critical Bard's dice set. Who's I right never here. have it on me. Tartar sauce. <laughs> I can't believe you didn't prepare for tonight's show. I, mean, I, I can't believe it's not <laughs> butter. Like... <laughs> butter. Uh, all right. Uh, hey, for everybody who is watching us on YouTube, thank you so much. Do us a solid. Uh, leave us a like, comment, or subscribe. Smash that bell. The whole nine, yard, whole nine yards helps the show and the channel grow as a whole. If listening to us in podcast form, please leave us a review on your podcasting uh, service of choice. And lastly, we are actually now, as a channel, uh, soft launching our new Exploration Society fundraising tool through Ko-Fi. Is it pronounced coffee? I it's say coffee. coffee. I coffee. say coffee. It's, it's like whatever. buying a cup of coffee. Yeah, it, exactly. It's, it's almost like the Japanese pronunciation. It's like kofi. I feel like if I try to do that, coffee. it's going to be offensive. So I'm just going to say coffee. Uh, <laughs> so that's how it's pronounced. So, <laughs> I'm learning rip. Japanese right now. So that's why I'm like, yes, yeah, coffee. <laughs> yeah. You're, the way you're saying it, 
sounds less Japanese and more like Mike Myers' coffee talk character on Saturday Night Live. Stop this. A cup of Stop coffee. This. We'll talk. Donate to coffee talk and we'll we'll talk about D. <laughs> Get a cup of coffee. We'll talk about uh about So we uh, have that Unix. now. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to find a phone DD version of it. All right. Uh, so, anyway, yeah, use your, so uh, enter the coffee, enter the coffee code in the chat and check it out. On coffee, you can tip as, as you would regularly, but you can also join the society, the society with a monthly tip amount. You get the same great rewards as you would on Patreon, and you can unlock things like toast with your tips. Plus, plus coffee doesn't take a cut. So nearly 100% of your tip goes straight to the channel uh, after PayPal, of course, but that is inevitable. Uh, thank you very much. And now we will get into tonight's episode, uh, A Splash of Heroism, where we begin where we left off last week in the, the corner marketplace area of an open air a a agora in the city of Neo Lantern, where a... I don't think we named her last week. I don't think we named her. Casey. Um, yeah, we named her. Oh, yeah, Casey, you're Casey. right. That's right. Thank no, you so much. Good catch. Uh, I'm so glad you're here because I'm the worst at memorizing my own stuff. All right. So uh, we have Casey, who was the, you, you thought was your friend D, uh, Lysandros and Callie. Uh, she was not. She was a, a, a ne'er-do-well who was hired by the Gorgon to make life rough for the two of you and vengeance for what happened to her and her empire. Uh, she pickpocketed uh Marifine, Marifine, after thinking that she was the satyr that was being she was being hired to mess with because she was sitting next to Callie at the table, and uh, <clears throat> you have chased her down thanks to the very skillful abilities of your new friend Zindar. You were actually able to catch her in a spider web, and now she has been also very, very effectively suggested in turning herself in, and she's given away a lot more information than she probably would have otherwise, but also not very good at keeping secrets herself. So it's she- Basically a third rate D knockoff. Yeah. I mean, complete <laughs> disappointment. A 3D, you might say. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so that's where we are now. What would you all like to do? <clears throat> yep, well, we cough and die. I was gonna say not cough. <laughs> I'm writing KC fake D, so now I have it in my notes. Zendar is just watching. He doesn't really know exactly what's going on. He only came out here because Lysandro says it was something happening. So uh, Lysandro, if I remember right, was like right in the midst of the the we're right next to the person, and I think Mar Marfine was too because she had come up and and gotten the. Uh, the bag and everything. Mm -hmm. I so think most of us are right next. Uh, I think Callista might be like a step by, like past oh, that. Yeah. But, but we all were there because we all came up to get her, get the person out the yeah. way from all that. So Lysandros is just going to kind of, uh, I, I forget, did the person leave or are they still like there? They're, They're there, there because D, uh, so Callie has them in custody, has her in custody because right. she, she was suggested by Zindar to turn herself into the authorities. And so <laughs> yeah. she, and she agreed to do authority. that. Yeah. Yeah. Because then I think Mara, I think Marifine, Marifine, uh, told her like, she's the authority. So she turned herself in and it was very fun. So Lysandros is just going to like uh, jump around and be like, well, Oh, that, that that was quite a fun little encounter we had there. I think it was like kind of a bonding experience, right? Like we're all sort of like bonded. Ah, uh, I don't know. What's what's a word? And he he kind of goes over to Marfine and it's just like, wouldn't you say this is something that like brings people together in uh, not exactly family, but you know, a way that bonds them? So they mentioned that there was a underground sort of situation happening. I'm interested in that. I know I, I hear you, Lysandros, but let's get to the, let's stick to this co topic here. This is very interesting. Oh, well, <laughs> you know, I actually might know a little bit about underground gambling rings around here, having myself been something of an underground gambler for a good amount of time. But, uh, you know, here's the thing. Ah. <sighs> Information like that, that's the sort of thing you only share with close friends. <laughs> <laughs> You're really going for this, aren't you? Um, Jindar steps forward. I don't really know uh, what, who they are, um, but they mentioned someone, um, the, the, the Gorgon. 
Oh yeah. No, oh, yes. no, I didn't. I didn't actually. I never said it. You, I don't know what you're talking about. I just totally just what? No, I nope. You see Zindar reach into his uh, bag, take out this like this this sphere, and it spins and plays the exact thing she just said <laughs> okay. five seconds ago. That's one of my magical tinkering things. I love I it. <laughs> I can say you actually. You mentioned I had to save it when you I went to make sure I heard Gorgon. I don't remember exactly what I said at the time, but well, for the for the sake of fun storytelling, when you play it back, we hear her go, "My balls just I got higher by the Gorgon. The Gorgon's too high at me. It was definitely the Gorgon." Like she says, <laughs> <"That's> <laughs> <the time through." laughs> if anybody asked, it was the Gorgon, but you didn't hear me tell you the Gorgon. So. I don't quite remember saying it that often and clearly, but there it is. Day. <laughs> that is a nifty little tool you have there. Um, I like to make things. I, 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 well, I, I do more stuff with plants and things, but sometimes I can tinker too. Okay. So where is this, um, Gorgon person? Oh, the Gorgon. She's the crime boss of the underground world. There was a whole thing where she owed me an enormous amount of money and I was trying to get out of it, you know, and we did a whole adventure, and then I failed at getting out of it, and now I've got a lot of money because of it. Oh, yeah. You have a lot of money? I know, right? It's a bummer. Then why did you steal my drink? What? What do you mean? You stole my drink. If you had a lot of money, then you wouldn't need to steal people's drinks. I... Honestly, the logic isn't following for me right there. <laughs> Interesting. So about this Gorgon, how do we how do we get there at the underground situation? How do we get there? I know you mentioned you only tell close friends. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, here's the thing. Friendship is sort of a, a, a fluid state that, like, people declare, and they're just like, hey, we're friends, right? So, I mean, that's not that much of a cost, is it? And he turns toward Callie and kind of gives a little look. Oh, I'm going to win I. this bet. <laughs> I have lost bets for my entire life, and I am going to win this bet if it kills me, which is also a little new, by the way. Mm. Yes, I know. By the way, how's, uh, what, is, what is her name? Clothis treating you? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, I don't know if the Clothis thing is is working out necessarily. You don't say. Uh, yeah, I, I, let, let's say I'm uh, between gods right now, sort of. As it should be. Uh, what, what was your the friend's name? Your friend's name? Zandar, was it? Huh? Yeah, Zendar. Sorry. Hi. Zendar? Zen, Zendar. Zendar. Yeah. Uh, you, you know of the Gorgon. Um, I've heard well the name was interesting and I was wanting to uh meet them. Oh yeah, well I mean we could probably arrange that. I mean anything for someone who's been through the stuff that we've been through. I mean, we had drinks together, you gave me that one drink that made me feel really great. Are you feeling better? I I told you it was an experiment. I probably should have warned you a lot earlier. Um and I didn't. I'm sorry. Oh no. It's okay. I'm always open to try new things. Trust me, when you've been around as long as I have, it's like new experiences or something that you that you enjoy. And I mean, I kind of was like that before, and back when I was young, so. Oh. Look, the way I see it, you're one of the most interesting people we've run into here. Just, I mean, look at your hair. I mean, it's different, it's cool. I was born with it, so I don't really know that it's cool or not. Um, but well, thank you, I guess. You have horns. I don't have a horn. Hey, thanks. I like these. They're pretty good. But uh, look, my point is that I've been doing things like this long enough to know that if you run into a couple strangers at a bar and you all end up doing stuff together, like, you know, you might as well stick with it. People come and go. But, you know, if you meet cool people, you got to make something of it. 
I agree. And it seems like you guys are really good friends. So I can just turn around and plug my ears. And if you yes. want to tell your really good friend how to get oh. to where the Gorgon is situated, I can come yeah. back and then we can go on an adventure together. I no. turn around, I put my back there in the group and then sit there and wait. I could literally watch an entire episode that's just the two of you trying to be and not be friends with each other. <laughs> like that's like literally the most fun thing in the world for me right now. All right. Look, you can't trick a trickster. And I'm going to tap her on the shoulder and be like, look, I'm just gonna lay this out there. All you have to do is say that you and I are friends once. And then I will tell you whatever you need to know about finding the Gorgon and her underground gambling den. I do not think this is too high a price. Interesting. Uh, uh, do you know if I was in earshot of hearing Callista or uh, them mention the dinner? Last week? Um, I think you would have been, um, but I also... I'm going to have you roll a perception check for me. And it's kind of posthumous, but like mm -hmm. roll a deception at disadvantage. So roll it twice, take the lower of the two rolls. Because this, I think they were talking about it at that moment when you kind of zoom, zoned out. And so we played it as like you weren't paying attention to them when it happened. So I you remember were in them mentioning it again when we were in this area. I don't know. Okay, yeah, that is true. Callie did say dinner for a week, so just roll <laughs> it straight. Don't roll it at disadvantage. Just roll okay. a regular roll and just tell me what the You said is. perception? Yeah. Oh, where'd my other tab go? <laughs> oh, wow. Well, I guess oh, I didn't rip. hear anything. Uh, I got it. Uh <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't remember anything. I think you were. I think at this point you were so focused on this person who had stolen your purse and had your yeah. really important purse that you were like laser focused in on them. So that should be uh, what you you didn't hear anything about dinner. You don't even know if dinner exists at this point. Uh, Dang it. So, my plan is ruined. Yeah. Uh huh. Um. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So. You don't need me anymore, right? Like, I already talked to the authority, and I, uh, I did my... What, what's up? Actually, I have a friend you need to talk to real quick so I can get paid. So we're going to go chat with them, and then you can be on your merry way. Oh, all right. Can we do that? So I can just go. I can just go when it's done. Yeah, yeah. We'll go do that real quick while uh, those two try to become friends. <sighs> All right, look, I can't force you to be my friend immediately right now, but if I tell you where this is, then I get to go with you. In fact, we, we all get to go. We, 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 we'll all go and we'll uh, go to the underground gambling den. We can uh, maybe meet the Gorgon if she's willing to talk to me. She's not a big fan of me, but I will bet you that by the end of the time, you will want to be my friend. Hmm? As this is happening, <laughs> Zendar walks away towards where the uh, the webbing is uh, that's starting to dissolve. Um, and he kind of goes down, crouches uh, very close to the ground. Uh, and he starts to, he takes out a little vial. He starts to scoop some of the product back into the vial. And at the same time, the snake on his shoulder kind of comes off onto the ground. And he's just watching. And as he's doing it, he can speak to the snake. And he says, I might meet my mom. This is really cool. What if it's her? I don't know. It might be. Um, let's just hope. I mean. My mom might be a crime lord, but I don't really think that's, you know, important. What's important is that she's my mom. <laughs> and he just continues to stuff that in and then starts to head back. Uh, by the way, just so you know, in Roll20, I actually made you a uh, dark if you're a little I familiar. Saw, oh, and saw, you should be able to control races. it. I, yeah, I, uh, think you I can't be able to move it around. I can't right now, but we'll figure it out. Oh, 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 yeah, I lied, I lied, I lied, I lied, I lied, I'm going to lie. Oh. So yeah, whenever you want to use that familiar from now on, you should be able to drag it to the map. And yeah. I did not, I did not lie. I can't do it. Okay, we'll figure out later. <laughs> All right. Um, so here, interesting. We'll figure out. Yeah, we'll uh, Yeah, no problem. 
All right. Uh, so that is where we are right now. So, okay. So, Lysandros, you remember that the Gorgon's lair, the entrance to it is through kind of like a spillway uh, near the waterfront. Like that's kind of like a drainage, like, 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 like kind of like a walkway that goes along the drainage and then the people go down there and go under the city to do that. Uh, luckily, uh, Callie, you happen to know that the walk towards like the, the town authorities, like kind of like you kind of like the nose is close to the authority is probably a kind of close to the Harbor master. So you know that in that same direction is where you need to go to drop off your prisoner. So to save time, uh, we will say that you first go to drop off the prisoner, uh, Kate Casey, there's nothing really particularly fancy about that unless you want to negotiate a better price from the person or anything like that. So the, it plays out exactly how you think it would, where she is like, no, I didn't do nothing. And then she goes ahead and confesses everything she did in her entire life <laughs> and multiple crimes that she wasn't even being investigated for because she just kept going. So that's what happened there. Um, so as you are heading, I'm going to switch us to a new... Map. I'm the map. It I'm the map. Time. I'm the map. I'm the map. All right. Let me just go ahead and grab up all your characters here. Boom. 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 Whoa, it's like we were transported to a whole new world. A new world. <laughs> Shining, shimmering. All right. Oh, um, uh, we both did it. All right. Cool. So, um, cool. Wait, I also want to say, as we're like kind of making our way in the direction there, um, Lysandros goes to uh, Zendar. And it's like, hey, uh, by the way, I just wanted to say thanks both for the drink and for, you know, actually throwing the thing that caught that guy. And uh, I just want to say, I owe you one. And when I owe people one, that is a quantifiable thing. And he's going to grab. So I don't know if I mentioned to the new people, but even though I've lost them on this, um, Lysandros has a bunch of coins that are like that decorate his like hair and hang off of his horns and stuff like that. And he's going to grab one and kind of pull it off and flip it over to Zendar, and it just has IOU written on it. They're like very old coins, but they all have IOU scratched into them. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Um, I don't know what I would ask, um, I, I would do, I, I don't know what I would do with this, but um, th thank you. Hey, we've got time. If you ever need a favor from me, you got it. You just gave me a fate card, you have effed up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm put that All right. in my, in my uh, D &D oh yeah <laughs> write that down all right so as you are walking along the waterfront heading towards the spillway to the gorgon's lair Suddenly, you all start to feel a sensation under your feet as you come along the waterfront, uh, kind of when you get around to this area, and you feel a little bit of a rumble. I don't know what, what your marching orders are, so I'll let you all decide that for yourself since you can move your characters. But as you pass the waterfront, you start to feel rumbling almost as if it's like waves coming, but you don't see any waves out on the horizon. So, it, But it's that feeling of water receding a little bit from the dock and then slamming against it. And suddenly you hear people start to scream and start to shout and Lovely. along the coastline, suddenly popping out of the water are a series of massive, gigantic water elementals. What? What? Uh, <laughs> these weren't here last time we came here. Yeah, definitely not a thing here. And this is, sorry, what exactly the area we're at right now? You are kind of along the harbor. So essentially the, the town they are in is was built on the ruins of a town that was previously destroyed. Like essentially the Theros version of the lost city of Atlantis. Like imagine if after Atlantis was destroyed, someone built a new city on top of the ruins of Atlantis and called it Neo-Atlanta. This is Neo-Lantan. And so this is like a smaller way less developed city than this one ruins of a city that was destroyed long ago. And out of, so you're kind of on the coast. You're essentially the farthest uh, west that you can go before looking out into the open sea that goes beyond Theros's borders. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So these, these elementals start to move toward the shore. 
And you also see suddenly that frantic townspeople, like towns guard and stuff, are all starting to run towards the water to attack. Now, this is a pretty massive group of, of beings, and there's also like a lot of big things. So I'm going to be utilizing a lot of the uh, the mob rules for D&D combat here to make it go a little bit faster. So I might not be rolling all the time for the, the creatures. But uh, yeah, so these all popped out. They are heading toward you. They are heading towards the city to attack it. I need everyone to roll initiative. Oh, Lord. Oh, oh Lord. On. This is going to be great. Ooh, where's, where's my initiative? What is... Okay, I thought that was a one again. Oh, my gosh. Uh, mine, mine was, like, on the one, and then it rolled over <laughs> onto the 19. We add some yeah. back to the list. Also, I want to thank uh, Two Minute Tabletop for this awesome map that we're using tonight. Why is this oh, not wow, letting me in? Here we go. All right, so if everybody wants to go ahead and put their initiative, I, I, can, I guess I can ask, but uh, I so, uh, cool. Uh, Marifine, what's your initiative? 11. 11, cool, I'll put that in for you. All right. Lysandros? 22. Ooh, wow. Callie? Seven. Okay, you already got that there. Cool. Okay. <sighs> Let me just go ahead and roll I'm, for the elementals. I'm doing the thing where I'm going, do I do d and Beyond dice? Uh, do I do roll 20 dice? <laughs> I know, right? But more specifically, which one is going to screw me more? <laughs> <laughs> That's the question. Yep. All right. So the elementals roll 10. I'm going to have them all move on a turn. I'm going to, so I'm going to, because, because there's a mob of them, I'm going to use the mob rules so i will base that on who they're attacking and so we'll see how that goes because there are currently six of them so uh if, one thing i forgot to have you all do so we'll do this another time one thing i like to do in roll 20 is when i have you put your character names i like to have you add your ac okay. so that i can see what your ac is quickly so if you're able to do that right now that'd be great if you don't think you can do that at the moment don't worry about it i'll add let's ask your ac as we go on uh so uh looks like the first one to get to go is lysandra so this is a pretty big map so I, but I think we'll be good. So, and there is water, obviously. I would say that once you get beyond where the kind of water starts to go into it, it's like, like, so for those people who don't have a map, we do have podcast listeners. We have people who are visually impaired. So I will say that there's probably about four or five feet past the like loading area where you can walk through the water and it won't be hazardous terrain. I think once we get towards a little bit deeper, it gets to be about knee deep or beyond. That's when it becomes like rough terrain. And then after that, you have to have a swimming speed or else you can't, you can't fight in that area. So I would say that that's where we're at. And yeah, here we go. And also uh, I will say because there are villagers attacking, they will also get mob rules against the elementals. And I'll, I'll just have those go each turn, I'll just describe effects that are happening as we get to the top of each round. I will just have effects happen for them attacking people. So that is where we are. All right, uh, Lysandros, it is your turn. What do you do? Okay, at the moment, it doesn't really look like any of them are, uh, like, they're not next to anybody and they're not really at, like, a disadvantage of any sort. So I don't think I can, like, exactly sneak attack anybody. Uh, but do I see anywhere that I could, like, uh, I don't know, get a... Is there somewhere I could hide and get a good vantage of everybody? Sure. I think that because this is a working dock and there are layers of piers and there are boxes and there are things like that, I think that if you start moving towards the waterfront, I think for the usage of the map, if you see anywhere on the map where there are boxes or there are like these like kind of like loading cranes and things like that, I would say that you are allowed to hide behind any of those things. If you want to hide behind the structure that is closest to you, you could do that. Uh, I think that otherwise you're going to have to hope that they're engaged with somebody close to them to get a sneak attack. But yeah, you can definitely hide behind things that are. And I'll, I'll say that as you get, whenever you see a line on the map like like this, I'll say that's a lower structure. So if you so, can find a way to do cover that way, you can do that too. This this building right here, how how high is it? Uh, I think it's one story. Okay. Um. So what I want to do is just Lysandros just sees what's going on and he just wants to like bound around and try and get up onto the roof. Okay, I think with your your like satyr uh, like 
agility, I don't think that that's really hard for you to do, so I, I won't make you roll for that. I think that if you get to like a part where it's low enough in the corner, you could probably do your like hoof bounce and do that. So I think, yeah, I think I would say that that would probably take you an extra 10 feet of okay. your movement to make that jump. But yeah, you can do that. Which I, I should have plenty because I, I've got 35. So if I go like 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, it's 5 feet per square, right? Yeah. So yeah, he's just going to make his way like up to the top of the roof. And then Lysandros kind of like lays himself low and starts to like pull out his um, uh, his sling and loads a rock into it. And then just sort of like gets ready for everything to like get closer. Okay. So he's just what's the like, range? What's the range on your sling? The sling has a range of thirty feet. Okay, so yeah, it's thirty one twenty. So cool. All right. So you could you could make an attack now. It just would be a disadvantage. Uh, Don, do we have any rerolls yet? Cool. So you do you do have disadvantage. Uh, for the, the range attack, but you do have six rerolls available. Okay, so uh, yeah, you know what? He will just like take the, some of the rocks and just be like, ah, whatever, no use in waiting, and just uh, launch a uh, launch a sling shot at them. All right, go ahead and make an attack roll at disadvantage. Oops, that was an accident. That's okay. Don't worry. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna roll this one in. It's really easy. If you're using D&D uh, Beyond, especially, it's really easy to accidentally roll dice in D&D Beyond. All right. I got a 12 was my lowest hit there. Okay. Yeah. 12 does not hit. All right. That's fine. So he just launches a rock off and it's like, ah, I was never probably going to hit that one anyway. <laughs> you're probably right. All right. Yeah. So... And then he just throws himself down and kind of like looks over the edge of the thing. So he, he's got a good vantage point. All right. That is your turn. Uh, Zendar, it's your turn now. Okay, um, well, what happens is Zendar is not a fighter, um, and is, um, I, I, I can't, I can't do much, but, um, one, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, yes, um, he gets over to this area, this group of people trying to, you know, kind of move around and see what he can see, um, and wait, hold on. Hold up, wait a minute. Okay, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um he takes a little contraption from his um from his bag and he gets one of his vials and it seems clear, but every now and then you see like a fleck of blue, a fleck of green, a fleck of purple. Um, and he like tries to aim, and he like pulls it back, and launches this vial all the way into the water right here. Um, and as it hits the water, it breaks from impact, and then that was a, as a um, a molt um, a. a cataclysm of light for a moment that appears as I need both of these two. Um, that this and this uh, water elemental to make a dexterity saving throw. I because <laughs> I'm doing mob rules and just for speed of game, I'm gonna go ahead and say that that succeeds, and they're not gonna need to make the saving throw. So go ahead and tell me what happens. What's the okay? They, uh, they fail because they are big. They are moving towards it. There's no way they could dodge out of it. They are just too massive for what you threw at them. So that was fairy fire. Um, okay. He had um, condensed fairy light uh, that he has try to uh, uh, hold from a flower. Um, and now any uh, attack against those two uh, elementals will be at advantage. Excellent. I am going to mark both of them with a little green dot so that we know that they are fairy fire. And they um, the, uh, and they shed dim light for 10 feet. Uh, and it can't benefit from being invisible. Excellent. That is a very effective thing that you just did. Uh, and then I don't think I have a bonus action. Uh, nope. I, I stay where I am and I hope for the best. 
<laughs> Can anybody else but me see the radius that I just put on these things, or is that just a, a GM? I see a green dot. I, 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 I see, a green, I see dot. a green dot. Yeah. Well, I know anyway. It's it's not that bad. It's I, even though it's it's nighttime. I'm saying there's enough light from the moon and the stars that y'all can see. It's not like pitch black at night. It's pretty wide open nights, and you're good. All right. That's that's your rest of your turn. That's me. All right, uh, Marifine. It is up to you. What are you gonna do? Uh, it's five feet per square? Yes. Oh, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I either have close core to combat or push you away from me. <laughs> do you want to prepare? There's also the options yeah. to do dodge if you want to have set yourself up for, for advantage on the next, or sorry, the ability that the next attack on you has disadvantage. There's also dash if you want to use twice your movement. There is help if you can find a way to help one of your new friends, except for obviously Les Anders is not your friend. Uh, <laughs> if you want to help one of your compatriots, then they will get advantage on their next attack. So those are options as well if you don't think there's anything you can do. Okay. Or if you have any spells available. I don't know what spells you have chosen, but possibly a spell could be useful. Yeah, there is a spell, but I... Wait a minute. Who is this? I don't see that... Uh... Zandar. Is that Zandar? Uh, Zandar is here. Okay, I was like, why is the... token's upside down for I was like, the token looks so different. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Which, I mean, we're looking from above. I turned it upside down. I I thought it was a hand, and I was like, who is that? There you go. Um, Can I sense that... um, uh, Zendar is not a fighter, or like, is there a way that I can tell that? Oh, I think he said out loud, "I'm not a fighter." Oh, okay, so, I think so he you said that out be... loud. I think you did, didn't you say that out loud? <laughs> I one thousand percent said, "I'm not a fighter." <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. okay. So you're so... pretty sure you can decide he's not a fighter because he definitely said. <laughs> okay, so is if I possibly am I able to do like my second level spells? Yeah. Okay. Um, and I can. Would I be able to walk up to? Yeah, you have, you have no room for that. That's okay. Fine. Yeah. So for your second level spells, for in your spells, you should have slots per level. So mm-hmm. you just mark off one of your level two spell slots, and that's saying that you're using your level two spell. Okay. So. Um, okay. So then I walk up to Zan- Zandar and say. You mentioned you're not a fighter. Here, let me help you. And then I want to cast my invisibility spell on him. Nice. Um, oh, I like that. Yeah. I mean, I'm a bard. I take care of people. <laughs> <laughs> take care of your friends, right? <laughs> so then what I, I would roll for it, right? I don't think you have to for invisibility. invisibility. The, okay. the spell description should say it. There is a, there's a roll, but I don't think you yeah, need Yeah, I just see a cast, roll. like the, the plug in, just like roll everything. I was like, okay. So I don't have to. Yes. I want to cast invisibility on Zandar. Yeah. Zandar is invisible. Yeah. Okay. So I, I will guess, mark. You say, like, I don't know what you did, but thank you. <laughs> I'm going to put a little, uh, I think there's a little symbol. I'm just going to put a blue dot so we know that Zendar is invisible. Can you see yourself when you're invisible? I don't think he's looking down. <laughs> <laughs> I just wonder, like, can you? You know, like, I think, well, I think I he will say you can, but it's like, it's like you kind of, you are like, you are aware, like, there's like an ephemeralness to you. Um, I think that's what we'll say. Like, you can tell that something's with, with you, but yeah, you, so you know that you're invisible. That way, if it goes away, you're aware of it immediately. That's but, fair. Yeah. Is that okay. why I think I think it'd be very hard to do anything if you couldn't <laughs> see yourself because like you wouldn't be like know what, how like what you're reaching for and stuff like that. So you still have like proprioception. So yeah, you, you feel where your arms are. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, is that the rest of your turn, Marifine? Uh, yes. I anything else would be useless. Uh, okay. <laughs> but it, for just for. Uh, it's for up for an up to an hour, so we have an hour. <laughs> so, it's a long time. Okay. And then are there restrictions? Like if you cast a spell, you it drops. Uh, like I have to. Zendar. I have to be concentrating on Zendar in order to. It's either concentration 
like I have to be focused on doing it. At least that's my interpretation of the word concentration. Yeah, or is. up to an hour. Well, <laughs> the concentration means that like if you cast another spell that requires concentration, then mm -hmm. you have to drop that. Or if you take damage while you're concentrating, you have to make a, a constitution saving throw to see if you're able to maintain the spell. Okay, so I just wanted to make that uh, yeah, that's what I figured. Yeah. Okay. No worries. Yeah, and you if can I still like screw around and do other stuff. Mm -hmm. Like you can cast other spells too if they don't have concentration. Yeah. So. Yeah, and okay. if I do an attack or a spell or cast a spell, this spell will end on me. They'll break oh, really? me out of yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. So because basically like they're revealing themselves. Yeah. Um, all right, I'm gonna put. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put instead of having. Okay, you, put, you already put that little on there, that little mask on yourself. So I'll take the dot off. But I am gonna put a dot on. Oh, thanks, Don. Nice. I am gonna put a dot on. Marifying to show that she is concentrating. So the blue dot will mean concentration for moving forward. All right, that oh, is yeah. Marifying's turn, and that is a fun thing. And uh, Marifying, I don't know if we came up last week, but you do have an ability as a bard if you want to at some point. You have the ability to do something called Bardic Inspiration, where you can actually give other players a, I think at this level it's a D6, because we're at level six. It might be a D8 now, I'll look it up in a minute. But you basically have a limited amount of those per day that you can give somebody, and then they have the ability to add that dice roll to one of their dice later. So that's a bonus action you can do. So keep that in mind. It's something you might want to do okay. later on. And it's like a, it basically the idea is like you do something so cool as a bard that they feel inspired, and they have that. It's like a fun little bard. That's like that's like a clutch move for bards. So it's definitely okay. something you want to like have in your wheelhouse. Yeah, option. definitely something to hold on to for more urgency. Yeah. Uh, all right, and uh, Callie, we come to you. Oh, I get to go. Yeah. Um, oh, you know what? Uh, yeah, I, I, I did line up messed up and had the water emblem going after you, so I'll just keep it that way for now because it's just. Yeah. I think I think I'll let you all have your like your first round, and then we'll get into the right order. We totally surprised them with how shocked we were at their appearance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I think for their turn, they're mostly just moving forward anyway, so because they're all out of range too, because they don't have any like, they don't have uh, like yeah. distance spells. So, all right, um, let's see how far I can run up. Um, by the way, is swim speed marked anywhere, or is it just like a rules thing that you figure out like on the character sheet? I think it's on your sheet under your movement if you have it. So if you don't have a swimming speed, then you probably wouldn't have it listed. Great. You, I mean, if you don't see one listed, you don't have one. No. Okay. Usually, only characters that are designated as having them, like what, like oh. like water genos genasi or tritons, have them. And then if you have a special item that gives it to you, like a special helmet or armor or something, then you get it. Okay, I'm going to measure this out and then probably dash. Um, let's see. <laughs> Uh, so my normal movement is 35, so we're going to double that and go to the end of the pier. Run, run, run. Boom. Maybe I shouldn't Kandash. go all the way out here all by myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that feels pretty, like, true to character. <laughs> yeah, it kind of is. <laughs> I didn't get the guards a turn. Um, she'll go here. <laughs> uh, maybe here. She knows how to turn. And, uh, yeah. That way she has, like, this thing she can drop on him, whatever this little pier thing that holds the fish up, and you take a picture by it. Uh, <laughs> metaphorical picture, because those don't exist yet. <laughs> um, there's a there's a, a person on the beach normally who draws a fast picture yes. of you, <laughs> and their name is Selfius. All right, yes. so uh, that is uh, that is your turn? Yes. All right. And then I think what we're going to do is because it actually turns out that the the townsfolk, like the guards and the, uh, the elementals are all about on the same. Well, it looks like it's Marifine and then the guards, but they all go. So I'm going to say that all of the townsfolk are able to get a shot off. And so they all do some damage to, I'm going to mark this with some damage. They all do a little bit of damage to each one of these big guys. I can fill that in in my own time. All right. So now all the water elementals are down a little bit just automatically from being attacked by the townsfolk. So I'm basically automating all the NPC combat so that we're not just spending the entire time with me rolling dice because that's not fun for anybody. All right. So cool. All right. And then all of the elementals start to move forward. And so we have this one here is now up on this dock, stepping off the water. This one here as well. Uh, this one here goes out. So there's three now that have now made landfall. 
and there are three that are kind of coming up behind those ones and there are two that are kind of coming up the middle area towards the ramp that leads up to the land and i think that because they were in pretty deep water even though they are water elementals and have swimming speed i i think I, in my mind they were actually further out than this map would show so i'll say that they're like they made their distance, they cut it up, and now they're getting up here. So now this is where the combat can really begin in earnest. And so we'll start back at the top of the order with Lysandros. Okay, so Lysandros, now that these guys have gotten a little closer, is uh, gonna close the gap just a little bit and get right up on the edge of the house. And so standing from there, he takes his, um, slings back out and he goes, that was just a warm up shot. <sighs> Any of you guys ever skip stones? Watch this, it's gonna be cool. And he just starts spinning the sling and launches a rock out. And he is going to try and five, 10, 15. How do you get the the little ruler thing to show up? It looks like, it actually looks like a ruler, like kind of like in a circle. Oh, that looks like a comb to me. Yeah, it looks like a comb <laughs> sitting in a cup. It's a comb sitting in a cup. That's what I always, yeah. I think it's <laughs> nice the first time I ever describe it accurately is what it is. So he is going to uh, shoot a rock at this one here. And if okay. it hits, then we'll, we'll see what happens next. Yep, go ahead. Because it's a special sling. <laughs> um, and his first roll is a 13. Um, okay. I just think, misses. well, I think I'm going to, uh, so as he's like launching it, he almost releases it and it like doesn't come out of the sling and he goes, ah, sorry, let me try that again. And does another one. So I'm gonna use one of my, cause I have luck. Okay. I have lucky. So I'm going to use one of those uh, to roll another d20 and pick the highest of the two. Uh, and that's a 16. That does hit. So you know that at least a 16 is the AC. It may be lower oh, than that, you don't know. Wait, I'm supposed to have advantage on attacks against this guy, right? Mm -hmm. You yes, do. Yes, fairy fire, yes. Because so, of the fairy fire. So you can save your luck for now, and we'll say the 16 was the higher of the two rolls for your advantage. Wonderful, I'll yep. take it. Yeah, I so, will say moving forward, Jordan, that's a good point. I will say that you have to use your luck before you can use audience rerolls. I'll luck say that as a thing. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Luck specifically says I can know what the die is before I, I add the luck die, though. So, like, yeah, I, I, I can I don't roll think first you, I don't think and you then need luck. the luck. I don't think you need the luck because you use your advantage instead. Sure, yes, it had yeah. advantage. I, yeah. I, I agree. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so you hit him. It, the, the stone hits him, and uh, I guess we'll, we'll roll the damage for it. But as you notice, the stone, like, hits him, and it, like, skims around the water, and it flies off and goes towards the one next to him too. I'm imagining it skipping along the water, like you like you skip the stones. Yes, exactly. Okay, so, but I do think that for the second one, I I'm, I might be wrong, but I think the way this magic item works, you still have to make the second attack roll, even though the first uh -huh. one hit. You have to roll again to see if it hits the second one. So yep. I'll say that it hit, I'll say that distance wise from where, the way this works, I'd say either the one to the left of it or the one to the right of it, you can hit with the second attack. I think it's gotta be this one because it says 10 feet and they're about okay. 10 feet away from each other. Cool, sounds Although great. Although it so... seems like both of them are, but whatever. Yeah. It's gonna be this one. Um, and the roll on that one is not good. It is a nine. So now I'll use that luck roll. Okay. Just to keep my stuff all together. Go yeah, away, so. die on D. Oh yeah, and that's a 19, which makes it a 26. Yeah, that definitely hits. So go ahead and roll your damage for both of those. So I'm gonna roll, okay, so the damage on the first one is going to be the one with sneak attack damage on it because I had advantage Great. on him, which means that I get that sneak attack. So I am just gonna roll with my physical dice and that is gonna be three D6 and a D4. Nice. Plus four. Wow. Wow. I rolled three ones and a six. Oh, oh my, my gosh. gosh. Okay, wow. so that's 13 damage on the first water elemental. Hey, okay, it's better than nothing. It is magical damage, if that matters. It does, but it, 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 I'll take it. Yep. Okay. And then the second one is just going to be a uh, 1d4 plus 4. Which is going to be 8 damage. Okay. Cool. Oh! Nope, that's not, that's not how that works. Alright, cool. Alright. That is, so they both take a hit. Yeah, so y'all see 
uh, Lysandros hit the one with the rock, and then it like bounces off of it, like kind of goes through it a little bit, and then it skips along the water, and then ricochets up and hits the other one before the rock comes to a halt and sinks down into the water. Uh, Lysandros, do you have anything else you can do on your turn? Uh, could I? Let's see. So I can use my um, I can use my cunning action to, but I don't really have anywhere I could hide since they kind of know I'm there. Do you think I'd be able to like? Nah, whatever. Doesn't even seem like they have range stuff. So Sanders is just gonna jump up and be like, "Yes, ha ha, got it. I bet I can skip it three more times next time." Let's uh, give me what five to one odds for that. <laughs> and then he's done. All right. That is your turn. Uh, let's go to the incredible invisible Zindar. Okay, so Zindar is invisible. He doesn't really know what's happening. <laughs> um, but he does, um, even though he can't be seen, he does turn to Mephine and say, um, I don't think I can do anything if I'm invisible, if I'm remembering um, the magics correctly. Uh, but I, I can, um, and then you see materialize because it's not invisible, um, a small bottle and he hands it towards Marifine and says, um, if you, um, take a second to drink that something good might happen. I don't really know what it is though. It's experimental. Yeah. You know, you could become, I don't know, immortal and not be able to die and terrible things happen and then someone from your family might have to come kill you. I don't know what that came from. Um, and I sent the bottle to verify. <laughs> I tried it and it was pretty sweet. Um, so if, if you end up wanting to try this thing, you just need to roll a D6 and let me know what that is. But you could do that as an action on your turn. That's all I do. All right. I am going to, on my, the next thing is the townsfolk that go. So I'm just going to real quickly roll just their damage because I'm going to say that there's enough of them that they definitely hit. So their damage is... Cool. All right. Oh, wait, that's not what I wanted. Cool. All right. So they all do some damage. So they are all able to take some more off. So you're seeing that all these elementals get hurt a little bit. And while I'm putting that in, uh, Marifine, it is now your turn. Okay. Um, okay. I look at Z. I mean, I have the bottle. I grab the bottle from um, Zandar and I say, you know, I from just seeing everything that you've done today. Today is the same day. Yeah, it's like okay. five minutes. Yeah. It's, like, it's, like, it's like maybe 20 minutes later because there was a whole thing where Callie was talking to a person okay. and they was processing and someone was confessing to crimes that she shouldn't have, so you're, you're fine. Yeah. Okay. And then I say, and then I say to him, I will take this risk. I hope. <laughs> D6, he said? Yep, just roll a D6 and let me know what number it is. <laughs> Oh, the lag. Come on. Just... <laughs> <laughs> it's like the slowest roll in history. It was a four. <laughs> it's a four? So... Oh, no. That is also boldness. Yay. Uh, <laughs> so you, you feel a little, you know, a little bold, a little excitable. You can role play that however you want. But for the next minute, you add a D4 to any attack roll and saving throw that you make. Very nice. Nice. Uh, I need to double check something. Mm -mm -mm, range twenty. How did you do that little arrow thing? It looks yeah. like a, it's like a comb in a circle. If you click on that little icon and then the, click on the map, you can drag it to wherever you're. So like, if you look at yourself, and you can drag. On like oh, the no, top I did. left. Top left. And then little, there's like a little floating toolbar that has like an arrow and a box and a paint for, and like a little circle with like a comb in it. It's a ruler, but yeah, yeah, I think you got it. Oh, and that tells you how much distance is between you. Oh, and oh, they're 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 too far. It's a so very good tool. <laughs> oh gosh, they're real far. Oh, I mean, I guess even if oh, I don't want to get close. <laughs> oh, actually, yes, I do. Um, <laughs> and just so you know, that was your action to drink it. Just so you know. Okay, then I, but I can still move, right? 
Yeah, you can move yeah, okay. and you can do a bonus action as well if you have a bonus action. That's not, you can't attack on your bonus action because you didn't yeah, attack yeah. on your main action. I just but... needed to make sure how far it was. Okay. Yeah. Well, now that I'm feeling a little bolder, uh, I'm okay. I'm going to move on top of the stairs here. Okay. And wait. Excellent. All <laughs> right. So now it is the water elementals turn. And I'm going to say that. Callie, what's your AC? 18. 18. All right. There are six of them. Let me see what the rule is for this. Uh, so they actually do not hit you because you they have to be. Oh, wait. Uh, yes, they do, because there's there, they need to be at least five. So you do take a hit. Uh, mm -hmm. So this one here comes towards you and moves up and does hit you. And so let me go ahead and just do a real quick slam attack on you. So it does... Uh, I'm, I'm going to roll for this just for the heck of it, but it was a 26, so it does hit you. Uh, and it does take... You, you take 12 bludgeoning damage from it. Ouch. All right. And then that is... Their turn, so I'll, that'll be the collective thing for their turn. And then, Callie, it's your turn now. <laughs> All right. So Callie will have, like, peeked over her shoulder to kind of, like, see what happens when, uh, is it Marathine? Marathine? Mm hmm Uh, drinks the potion. And she, like, sees that everything's okay. <laughs> Do I have to kill her? Okay. <laughs> She's like, oh, okay. I guess, guess it's okay. Whatever. Um, and then... Do a lot of potion drinkers in my life. <laughs> um... <laughs> And then she uh, looks at the giant thing that just like hit her, and she yeah takes the great sword and she's gonna smack. All right, go ahead and make an attack roll for me. Do not eat the hot sauce. Okay. All right. All right. I won't. I won't eat the hot sauce. <laughs> and the kitty cat who's like very entertaining. Did I miss something in the I'm, story? I'm, I'm probably gonna. Eat, I'm probably gonna eat some hot sauce later. Twenty five. That does hit. That does Ew. hit very well. All right. And then she's going to take her sword. She's going to bring it straight across the chest. Um, let's see. 2d6. Um, 2 plus 4. But I get to reroll a 2. Um, and it didn't have me do that for some reason. Because I am a great weapon fighter um, of the great swords. So how do I make it reroll a 2? I would just go over to... On d, &D Beyond, there's the roll button. There's the dice on the left-hand side. You can just pick the dice that you rolled and roll it again. Uh, okay, cool. So I'll reroll one of my d6s. So. Wait, what the heck? So it says I rolled a 12, so plus four. Um, so minus four, that's a eight, which means one of them was at least a. Well, it says that you rolled, it says you roll a, it says three plus five plus four. So, cause you had, a, it looks like oh. you, cause like the plus four is your, yeah. So you have yeah. eight. So did you have a two? I don't know because all I see is two plus four equals twelve, and I'm very. So you did two. not. You did not have okay. a two. Great. I just see it. Five. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think that's just a weird thing happening in the in D &D. Yeah, beyond. It's, it's okay. Like the things talking each other. Um, cool. All right. Oh, um, and then I get another attack. I get two attacks uh, per action. <laughs> okay, I have a question for you. Yes. Is your sword magical? Okay, so you see that it doesn't quite take as much damage from that first attack as you would like it to have taken. It still took a good amount, but uh, let's say like let's say if you thought you were taking it for twelve damage, let's say it only took about six of that twelve damage. That's so. fine. So she we're sees get that your magical sword. I know. So she sees that as she like brings it down. She kind of ah, snarls and then brings it back up because she's, she's not happy about that. So um, we're gonna go ahead and make a second attack. <laughs> Eleven. Eleven does not hit, so that is a that is a. But I should point out you got rerolls. You've got we five rerolls. Right re yeah, I'm gonna just go ahead and use one because we have a bunch. Cool. Now you have four uh, left for the players. Fourteen. Right. That just hits, so now you know Ooh. the AC is fourteen. <laughs> Beautiful. And then, oop, one of those is one. Oh, it rerolls it automatically. Beautiful. It did do the thing. Okay. But what did it report how much that actually was for all of you to see? No, um, it just, it just, for some reason it had you roll. Oh, yeah, I think it is. It's 15 damage. Yes, 15, so you got yes. 15 damage. So I know that typically we round down. I round up. So I will say that it does 8 damage to her. So 
Yay. I like players. All right, so that one. That one actually does look like it's getting pretty hurt because it's been hit a bunch by both uh, Lysandros with, with the rock and with you. I love that Lysandros' rock is magical and your sword is not. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so. Uh, maybe Callie should have robbed more graves because it worked wow. out for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, that is the end of the round. And suddenly you feel that rumbling sound again. And breaking out of the water is another elemental that is about four times the size of the ones that you have been fighting. Uh, And it is this massive, let me just pop that on into the main frame there. It is is a... Elemental that is care is wearing a like a suit of armor that it has on it, and it is now clearly uh, the HBIC of these elements. Why? Because you know people messed around and they people uh, to to quote the phrase. I mean, like it, someone fucked around, and now we're finding out. So that's what's happening. Um, yep. I don't so, like it. <laughs> um, to simplify the combat at this point. Uh, because it's already nine, and this is a lot of beings, and they're very powerful. I'm going to say <laughs> that the townspeople and the other <laughs> elementals have each other covered. So if y'all want to now focus on the big monster, that is probably fine for you to do. I'm just going to say that as a... You're welcome to fight the side monsters as well, but I will say that I, I kind of purposely said at the townspeople to be the like focus of the, the side things now, the main boss is here, essentially. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. I'll say that, like, when we see that big boss come up, like, Callie will probably turn and be like, why are we fighting these things again? Like, I don't remember getting the call for these things. Like, weren't we headed somewhere? I, 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 I'm kind of thinking that running might be a, a pretty legitimate strategy here. It used to be kind of my go-to. So, kind of an expert. Well, what do you think, new friends? <laughs> uh, is this the way that we have to go? Is there another way? Ha! You responded! That counts! <laughs> no! <laughs> no! Jordan, take inspiration. I hate this. <laughs> I hate everything about this. Uh, Zindar, you know, is quiet for a reason because he's staring and doesn't know what the heck is going on or why this is happening. Um, but he says, but he then says, I don't think we can run from that. Oh my God. Oh my God. He, he, you're still here. I assumed you were way ahead of us on the whole running thing. Right. Um, Sometimes when you're really scared, your your feet forget how to move. Huh. <laughs> ah, well, you know, I've never experienced that because I think I just talk faster when I'm really scared. But uh, you're talking really it. fast right now. It's kind of hard to understand you. Yep, no, that tracks. <sighs> well, because I'm bold, I sit here and say, I think we can take them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, how much do you think we could take them? Like, if we were to put odds on this fight, right. what would you do? Are we still in uh, initiative order? Yes, we are. <laughs> we are but I, I, I tend, I tend to for because we're doing a, a show. I do tend to let like have like cinematic moments where things happen, so role play can happen, and then we'll pop back in finish. Oh, of course, so no, no, yeah. He he is not going to talk next. He has something he's going to do. That's all. We just make sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tell you what, I'm going to say three to one against us. And so uh, let's see how this goes, right? Um. Okay, I'm just going to stay back here, and I will help you from a distance. <laughs> from a distance. All right. Um, okay, so now we come to the top of the order again. That thing appearing was its turn. So now, why? wait, where did it go? It was in my lineup. Did I lose it? Um, maybe it's gone. Maybe it died. Um, 
<laughs> it died! <laughs> I knew it! I told you. Yeah, you guys you should have listened to Marvine. She was right. Yeah. Hooray! <laughs> um, great. And then we're going to start at the top of the order, but we'll start with Lysandros first. Okay, everybody. This is going to seem a little dumb, but I'm going to throw a rock at it. Um, <laughs> and just from the the top of the thing, I'm going to launch a, a stone at it. Is okay. it... I guess it's not engaged with any of my allies, so I don't really have a sneak attack damage or anything on this. But uh, I'll let I'm you have gonna... it this time because it doesn't know you're on the roof the way the other ones do because it just came out of the water. So Yes! <laughs> All righty, I'll take it. This is a really uh, unfair fight, so I'm going to be willing to be a little bit like fudgy <laughs> as a DM on this. Okay, so I'm just going to roll physical dice, and it is cocked. I got a 15 plus 7. That is a 22. It does hit. What's your damage? My damage is 3d6 and a d4 plus 4, which is significantly better than last time. I hope so. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Uh, so that's 16 damage. Okay. Cool. It takes all of it because you're, you're thrown, your stone is magical. All right. Its turn was popping out of the water. Did you do anything else on your turn? Um, after that, I think I just, like, shuffle back a couple steps. Okay. All right, now we come to Zindar. Uh, I just realized the thing, so I'm just checking. As you look, whenever you have a question about a spell, most likely it's been asked on, on, on Twitter somewhere, uh, or Twitch, <laughs> uh... Okay, it does not. That's what I was trying to figure out. Um, I, still staring at the thing, I begin to come out of my invisibility as you see me holding now a um, a, a jar, and I go, um, I don't know how to... Wait! Yes, I can do this. Uh, and I throw it up, and as I do, this is just more flavor. As I throw it up, it splits into three. Well, it breaks, and then three shards come down towards uh, Lysandros, uh, 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 Kali, and Marathine. And as the shards don't really hit you, but the fumes that come out of it do. Um, and it smells like, it kind of smells like um, fresh, like focaccia bread wood chips mm. and um a little bit of poison but like not enough um and as it comes down and kind of encompasses you all he cast aid at second level hey. uh, so your maximum hit points increase by 10. oh yeah no 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 wait no by five eight is a second level spell um by five uh, so remember, it's not temporary. Your max HP for the next eight hours goes up by five. And he says, uh, I'm just doing what I can because if you get hit by that thing, um, I am a uh, healer. I am not a um, what's the type of person who puts people in graves? I don't remember. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, okay, don't die. And I go. Wow. Boop. wow, that stuff is good. The subtle hint of poison really gives it a bit of a bite. <laughs> it actually comes from me, so um, it's kind of a natural thing. I kind of emit a little bit of poisonous spray every now and then. I know how to control it. Don't worry, I won't hurt you. No, I'm into it. Okay, go find that thing. Bye. <laughs> Oh, wait, Ashley, just for earlier, we talked about uh, fighting and well, swimming speeds. One thing I wanted to clarify, because I don't think we got on this point, is that you can swim. You just have half movement when you're swimming. And you also have disadvantage on melee attacks, because unless you're using a trident or, I think, a short sword or something like that. So Also, Devil's Luck Gaming, thank you for the raid. Hey, thank you for the raid. Yeah, yes. everybody. And also, we kind of, just while we're paused real quick, uh, we did also get uh, two... Uh, 
uh, messages from the gods that we kind of got through. Since we normally, I usually stop at, at nine to do messages from the gods. So real quickly, anyone who has a drink that they want to toast with, go ahead and raise your toast drink. We have two right now. We have one from our friend Jake with Where With All. To friendship, only the most genuine and real of friendships that are definitely long lasting and real. And we also <laughs> have we also have one from our great friend Vampire Fifty Four. A great flat skipping rock totally missed the mark, but skipped great right out into the ocean. <laughs> so thank you very much for those two uh, messages from the gods. They are very exciting, and so we're happy to have them here. And thank you very much for supporting the show. All right, that is uh, Zindar's turn. Uh, very oh, much. Actually, oh. one last thing that happens. Sure. Oh, and I don't think she's gonna like this. Uh, before I move <laughs> back, uh, before I move back, I think I should be able to control it now. Yay! Wait, there we go. Yay! Um, before I move back, I uh, whisper a word in Draconic and I say, go help them. D just don't get hurt, please. Um, oh. And um, it's going to slither up to you, Callie, and attempt <laughs> to get, like, an attempt to, like, go up your leg. Oh, lovely. <laughs> and Callie's and that's like, how Dari <laughs> died. No. Um. <laughs> it can be resumed. Like, and then we've, yeah, then it's an hour in Dari casting. Fine, familiar. All right. So, um, I am putting uh, uh, Dari on Callie's leg. It's kind of wrapped around. Um, so wherever Callie goes, he'll go. But okay. it'll also help me as far as some range stuff goes. <clears throat> yeah, that's great. I love that. I am very. In fact, I'm going to give you inspiration because that's a really clever way to play that. So I. Oh, he just looks at Juju and just stares and just. <laughs> and she looks down at him. She's like. <laughs> 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 All right, I love that. All right, uh, Marifine, your turn. Okay. So, since I'm feeling bold, and Lysandra just threw a rock at a thing, I'm going to try and do something that may or may not work. <laughs> you just described Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> this I... might be crazy, but let's go for it. That, that's d, d I love it. I... I had to make sure I measured before I made this decision. <laughs> uh, but this would potentially affect people within 90 feet of me. But it would also affect the people with lowest hit points. We have only hit two things at the moment. The big guy and the little guy in front of Callista. But I will say that all the other ones have been damaged as well because of town people attacking them. So I, I have all their hit points marked on mine. So. Well, either way, I would like to put them all to sleep. <laughs> or attempt to put them to sleep. Okay. Uh, <laughs> go ahead. And, uh, is there a roll for sleep? I believe it. To, like, roll how it's much roll 5d8. Yeah, go ahead and roll those for me. Oh, I think I just do this. Uh, that, right? that just tells you what the cast is, but let me, I think if we just hit this button, that'll do it. Oh, that's for me. So hit that, five, hit that 5d8 button that's like the, right there on the description. Or like if you're in the spell description, there might be a button for 5d8 and you can click on that and that'll roll it for you. Was that it? Yeah, so you you got a 20 on that 5d8 roll. Okay. But you got a 3, 7, 5, 4, and a 1. Unfortunately, none of these creatures has a, a hit point level below 20 right now. Dang so it. none of them are put to sleep by that. Well, I try. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. Uh, okay anything yeah, else you uh, want to do on your turn? No, because I definitely still I have another backup plan, so I'm still going to stay put. Okay. That okay. is your turn. I'm going to go ahead and say that we have another round of combat between the water elementals and the humans. And I'm going to say are the, the townspeople. So I'm just going to do some math for myself to mark down those. But we don't need to linger on that because I can do that while y'all are doing your stuff. So I will skip both of those and we come to Callie. All right. Well, Callie has a friend now. And so Callie, being an experienced fighter who is trained um, with many things and as part of the Leonin army before she was excommunicated, um, she she knows how things work and recognizes that this is an ally. So she kind of looks at it and she's like, fine, whatever. 
And she like extends out her leg and lets it slither up. Um, but she also says, I'm watching you. And then uh, <laughs> she, uh, yeah, she'll turn to, where can she go now? Um, how far is the thing? All right, and we are half speed. Um, at what point can I say I've reached it? Do I need to get to the base of it? No, it's big enough. I'll say in any square that's touching where it's at, you're close. It's it's massive. It's like gigantic thing. Okay. So, yeah. And then water is half my movement speed. Yeah, water is half movement speed. Any attack made in the water with your while you're swimming is at disadvantage because your sword is too heavy for you to use in the water oh, normally. Cool. How do I taunt this? I thing will say that your claw, if you do your claw attacks, like you're slashing, True. I will say those are not considered. I, I let, I'll let you have those at regular attack. Very they're, they're okay. not as powerful. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if that's the official rules, but I will rule it that way. <laughs> and I'm in charge here. I'm the how, captain now. How do I make it when I attack me? Uh, um. Yeah. I have an idea. But, oh, I'd need to. I've already done. Go on this turn. You're okay. next, so that matters to you at all. Oh, I am? Mm -hmm. uh, Callie, if you want to hold action until after uh, I go, well, is that how it works? Would it be a new I don't, combat round? I don't round? think you would be able to communicate that to her to do that. So that's okay. where I think. So I'd yeah. have to wait after. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I'm going to move. You would have had to have used your free action on your turn to shout that to her so she would know to do it in character. All right. Well, Otherwise, I'm you're getting move... a little metagamey if you do it that way. I'm going to move here. And I'm gonna finish killing this one here. This okay. other creature. The one that's on the dock? Yeah. Okay. Because it hit me and I don't like that and it makes me mad. So I'm gonna roll my first attack. The sevens look uh fourteen does hit. Yes. Fourteen hits. Uh and so I do uh, however much damage it says in twelve damage, supposedly. She six damage to it? Yeah. And then I, oh, well, I rolled damage for a theoretical hit. We'll see if I actually hit. Sorry about that. No worries. It happens. Uh, Does hit, 15. so five more damage. So it is still up. It is still moving around, but you have done some damage to it. Between you and this guard here that's fighting, uh, it is definitely probably looking the roughest. And also, uh, Lysandros' clutch hit with the rock earlier. It is probably looking the most hurt out of all of the, like, minion elementals. I think got straight bonked. Great. Um, oh, once per turn when your attack deals slashing damage. Oh, I can just reduce its speed. Um, but okay. I, it's not going anywhere, so whatever. Okay, yep, that's Wait, it. Does your, does your sword do slow? Okay, yeah, so I'll yeah. move it. I'll, I'll, I'll just mark it that it is slower, so that way if I need, if I need to open your reason, now I know. Um, cool. I think there's like that. Thank you. Um, yeah, let's do that. All right. Uh, that is your turn. Now we come to Lysandros. Okay, so, um, uh, Lysandros, I mean, honestly, the biggest thing to do right now is just to keep throwing rocks at this thing. So he's just going to be like, so uh, how we feeling? Are, 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 are we continuing the not running plan? I mean, <laughs> I can keep throwing rocks, but you know, we'll see how this goes. And he's going to just launch another rock. At it, okay. Uh, this time it knows he's there, so I'm just gonna take this as a as a rego roll. That was your idea. Well, no, I had an idea, but it's not clear to me that that you are trying to get him over yet. Oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, well, I would have yelled as I walked towards the pier, like, "Oh, if only this thing were closer." <laughs> oh well, we'll see what happens next time, I guess. Oh my god! <laughs> so rock throw. Uh, that is a uh, that is a twenty four. That hits. Ma, wow, your so, your rock throws are amazing tonight. Well, I have plus seven, and I got a seventeen on that one. Yeah, but this has really high AC, so it's still good <laughs> that you're rolling really high. Nice. Uh, well, this is only going to do one d four plus four damage. So oh yeah, bonk. That is uh. That is seven damage. Yeah, that's pretty good, actually, for that. Ha! Take that, giant monster! You didn't expect anyone to throw rocks at you, because that sounds stupid, doesn't it? 
you just hear like a bonk as it hits it, and it's like, and then it keeps moving. All right, uh, that is now its turn. It has a pretty high move speed, and it seems to almost like you're like the buzzing of flies to it, so it just keeps walking forward, and now it has started to walk up the ramp onto land, and it, like, now is in a space where anybody can attack it without it. Anyone who wants to move up to it for melee range is now within melee, now able to approach it without a sw swim speed issue. So nice. I will say that. But it is there, and actually I'll move it here just so that we can have people attack it in melee range. Uh, and boom, that is its turn. Uh, I think that, yeah, I think that it sees Lysandros up on the rooftop. And it tries to throw a trident at you because you hit it with a rock and it's like, it has, it has this massive trident. It goes to, to hit it. Um, I love that this yeah. thing is this big and yet it's a five foot range, which is hilarious to me. Um, I guess actually I made it bigger than it should be, so that's fine. Um, it's going to throw the trident and let's see how it does. I'm going to roll for this one. It's a 15. What's your AC? My AC is a 14. So it does hit you. Great. All right. And then it does you hit you for 10 damage. It rolled really well. So, uh, yeah, as, as it as the trident comes at me, uh, I go, what? Come on, that's not fair. I just threw a rock. And I dodge out of the way and take only half of the damage because of my uncanny dodge. Great. So you take five damage. It's an attack that I can see. Yep. And I can see. Yeah, you, you could definitely see this. This is real, <laughs> yeah, seems, real visible. Seems rather visible. All right, uh, that is its turn. Zindar, it is now your turn. He is right next to this thing. He's no longer invisible. If he could, uh, uh, luckily he's wearing slightly dark pants. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is the wrong place for him to be, y'all. Um, he will... What will he do? What will he do? Um, yeah, he goes, um, this is bad, uh, and I'm just going to assume this thing has a lot of HP because it's pretty big. <laughs> um, Yeah, what he does is he pulls out another vial with that same clear but slightly colored uh, uh, mist inside of it, chucks it at this big thing. Can it make a deck save? Sure. Imagine it jumping out of the way. <laughs> I'm going to do it at disadvantage because it's so big. Uh, and it So at disadvantage, it got a 12. Hey, hey, no. It, it failed. Good. Uh, and now it has fairy fire on it. So <laughs> every attack is at advantage. Yes. That is that is very clutch, I think, in this moment. So And he just like steps back as far as he can uh to the wall just a little bit. Um and goes, Okay. Um I was never here. That that's me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Marfine, it's your turn. Oh, act! No, oh, no, I lied. I lied. Nope. Okay. I, nope. I lied. I lied. Nope. You, you, so you're good. Okay, Marfine, it's your turn. Okay. Am I still bold? Yeah. But are you okay. also daring? I am daring because I have a plan. It's, Is it, it run? was. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's actually to use Thunder Wave, which Ooh. will attack each. Each person that's 15 cubes away from me, so each one that's 15 cubes away from me um, has to do a constitution saving throw. Well, it's a, it's a cube right? that's, it's, I believe Thunder Wave is, it's a 15 foot cube. So yeah. essentially. Oh yeah, that's like 15 feet from me, not 15 foot yeah, cube. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, it makes it what save? Uh, con constitution. Okay. I will so it would just be the big guy and the other one in front of Callie. Uh, well, if you're, doing it, if you're doing it in that direction, you also have to have Callie make it because she's in front of you and you can't really control who it does or doesn't hit. So you can do it at just the big guy and it'll be just him, or you can do it at 
try to get the ones that are next to it, and then you'll also have Callie in the in it. So you're, it's up to you if you want to hit Callie as well. Oh, okay, so a self slash fifteen feet. Because it says I yeah, cast so it's, it on it's, it's, like, okay. it's, it's like a cube that comes out of you, like a, a distance in front of you. So if you do it, like if you were to turn that direction and do it, like basically, it's almost like imagine like a block of thunder comes forward from you, and so nothing can dodge out of the way of it completely, including your allies. Okay, well then I'll just do it for the big guy, but then also unfortunately it pushes the people ten feet away. Okay, so nobody else will get hit by it but him, mm -hmm. but he does take. Uh, so what's the? Uh, go ahead and make your damage roll for that. He got a twenty-three, so he did save. Damage. Yeah, he rolled a nat twenty on his Constitution save. If I were my damage roll on the description of the spell, it should tell you what the damage is. Okay, so do I? I click the two d eight, right? Yeah. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Oh shoot. <laughs> Okay. So it's a five, so he only takes half of that, so I'll, I'll round up to three. Um, but Wait, because how, many, he how many of you rolled do we have? Wait, um, I'm pretty sure. I, yeah. Wait, never mind, never mind. Huh? Pretty sure what? Yeah, I, I, I'm wrong. Yeah. I was, I um, was incorrect, but I was confident about it. <laughs> you just described D&D. &D. All right, so, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Because he succeeded on his saving throw, he doesn't get pushed back, but he does take the damage, the half damage. Uh -huh. um, so that is what happens there. Um, but you know what? Let me see here. Is he vulnerable to anything? No. Okay. Yeah, because um, this is a magic thing, but I don't know if that was helpful. Yeah. Uh, in this case, it's not. I looked to see if he had any vulnerabilities to that, but he does not. So, all right. And is he higher? Does he have disadvantage? Uh, not on a not on a, a, a saving throw. Oh. Yeah, that just gives you advantage on attacks. It doesn't change your saving throw ability. Okay. Basically, basically, what he was seeing was how well he could like hold up against the damage that was coming in, and he did okay. He, he rolled a natural twenty, so I kind of have to let that like <laughs> I tend to be pretty uh, fair, but when I roll a nat twenty, I do tend to like stick with, stick with it. So um, in combat. So all right, that is going to be Marfine's turn. I'm going to say that in the the way I'm going to handle this from now on is instead of whittling away the damage on the elementals as we go. I'm just going to say because there's enough townspeople fighting them that at the end of each when we get to their round again, I think they're able to beat one of the elementals. So the one that's in the water behind him so I'll take this one away. So that one has been defeated. That's one less elemental going uh, and that's going to be that round but I'll say on the other side, the elementals killed this guy. So he's dead. So, you know, his name was Frank. He had a family. It's fine. We're going to move past it. All right. So <laughs> now we come back to Callie. Well, Frank made choices. And so <laughs> Frank's going to have to deal with those choices. All right. <laughs> he chose to be in the city watch. <laughs> How dare he? <laughs> Wait a minute. I think I owe that guy money. Oh, I thought Frank <laughs> was the family. elemental. <laughs> I thought Frank was the name of the elemental. No. <laughs> they don't really right. have names. They're more just like primordial beings that are coming up with a vengeance. All right. Uh, so yeah, now that Callie can reach the giant elemental, she's going to turn her attention to that. And she's going to um, slashy slash. Okay. Are your slashes magical or are they not? Because you're a barbarian, right? No, I'm a fighter. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, good luck with they're, that. they're magical to me. Does that count for anything? No. Okay. No. Fine. Uh, so she's going to attempt. That's a 19, baby! That hits! Beautiful. She you know it's at least 19. Yes. All right, so that attack hits. Boy, you keep rolling these 12 damages. This is like your <laughs> number tonight. Uh, and then it is its speed is reduced because I am a master slasher. Okay. Um, and then I'm also going to unwavering market. Um, so when I slash this one, I'm going to let out my um, special roar of uh, where I get a little excited. And um, so my slash it cuts so fast that you like the water. You can see it separate for like a little moment, like a divot in it because it's so big. I'm not going to cut right through it, but you see a little divot real quick. Um, and when that happens, uh, I've marked it. And so now it's um, to remind you, it's been a while. Um, no, please remind me. <laughs> <laughs> while it 
while it is within five feet of me, a marked creature has disadvantage on any attack roll that doesn't target me. Um, if the marked creature deals damage to anyone else, I can make a special melee attack on it. Um, on uh, against it on your next turn as a bonus action with advantage and plus three extra damage. So yes, and this is until it's marked until the end of my next turn. Okay, great. All right, that is your turn. Oh no, I get two attacks per. Oh, that's action. right, I forgot. Yeah, it's, I love it. Spider crap. Uh, yes, so I'm gonna do that. Oh, we're so close to a natural twenty. Um, Still hits. Yes, it does. So we're gonna do that damage. Is it a twelve? It's a fifteen. <laughs> okay, Ooh, I'll take that. Yeah, go for it. Um, All right, so and then I'm also damage. going to go ahead and action surge. Um, so because I've already like marked yeah. and riled up, whatever. Um, and so I'm gonna action surge. Um, and attack it two more times. Great. Awesome. Ooh, 12 or 13? 13 does not hit. Okay. That's okay. So she's just kind of, it's a lot of water right now. She does, she's not really paying attention. She's just going full force. 17? Does not hit. Ah! Oh, okay. Okay. And then action surge, what does it say? You can take one additional action. You can attack twice whenever you take the attack action. Okay, nope, that's it. All right, that's all she's got. She's tired herself cool. out. Tired kitty. All right, all right. Uh, that is your turn. Lysandros, it's your turn now. Uh, okay, so Lysandros is like, hey, that wasn't cool, but I can't do much different than what I've been doing, which so far has worked out okay. <laughs> and uh, yeah, another rock slinging at that guy. Uh, I will on. say it is engaged with your compatriots, so you will have sneak attack on this one. That's right. I'm taking the sneak attack. Uh, that is a seven, but I'm going to use another luck to... Uh, so that's a 14 total, but I am going to use another luck okay. to try and do better. Uh, okay, so that is an 18. That's an 11, that, but 18. That just hits. The AC is 18. Yes! Okay. All right. So my rock, again, just goes... Bunk, and it just... They, they keep just, like, bouncing off the thing's head and, and skipping off uh, into the water. And each of these rocks then, like, skips really brilliantly off into the ocean after that. <laughs> yeah, it looks fantastic. Oh, yeah. It's just... Forget that all of these attacks... Wait, 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 wait! <laughs> Everything should have been an advantage. Yeah, that's right. Right, oh. you're right, you're right. Uh, oh, gasp. Lysandros, go ahead and finish your turn, then I'll have I'll have Callie re-roll her missed attacks. I'm sorry. Uh, I love it. Okay. And, um, and, uh, and, and Jordan, take back your luck point. I'll say that your second attack was your advantage, that one. Uh -huh. that you yeah. I don't need Thank you luck. for reminding me about that Omega. Thank you. I even put the dot oh, on it. Oh, look. <laughs> My fault, because I, I, you know what I did? I put the dot on it, but I didn't put the fairy fire circle that reminds me of it. So now I will do that. Boom. So, cool. he takes fourteen damage from my uh, from my rock. Okay, I'm really Phoenix. David and Goliathing this thing. They Great. really are. Um, okay, I did it again. I, I keep accidentally putting the damage as the new health, which is not very good for me. Um, <laughs> no, but, no, let's uh, do it. Let's go with yeah. it. Um, Lysandros, make a religion check for me. I'm gonna okay. see if your faith in Phoenix can help you. I, I have something I'm gonna do, but I'm not gonna give it to you for free. So yeah, I um, think that's <laughs> fair. Uh, I have plus one in religion, and I got a 16. So that is a 17 total. Cool. DC was 15. So I'm gonna go ahead and let you make a second attack on this with your skipping rock because he is so big that I think that the water skips around and hits it again because it's like <laughs> so big. Uh, and I'm saying that you you kind of do get a little bit of like that Phoenix magic guiding your rock as it happens. So make the second attack for me. I'm, I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna make you make the attack, but you I have a chance it. to do this at, and you have an he, advantage. He's big enough that I, I ricocheted off of him. Yeah. And hit him. He, basically, it's bouncing around inside of his own armor. Like, like it went through oh, and it's like bouncing around. Yeah. I love it. All right. So, my you got first that roll boon from... <laughs> was an 11, which is another 18. And hits. then I got a 19, which is equally hits. 
<laughs> but it's a right. 26, which feels more emphatic, you know? Yeah, so go ahead and roll your damage. Now, of course, you won't get sneak attack on this because it's your second attack, but still. No, I only get one on this one, but I'll still take it. Yeah. Uh, so that's going to be seven. Okay. Okay, that's cool. That's actually pretty good. Uh, Callie, go ahead and make... Go ahead and re-roll whatever attacks you missed. You missed two, two, right? Yep. So go ahead and roll once for each of those. Because yes. that'll be your advantage on that. So yes. level one geek. Thank you for the raid. Thank you, level one geek. Yay! All right. Welcome oh. to Shields Up in the chat. Oh, no. That was a crit fail. Okay, Ooh. we're just that one did not happen. Just really okay. missed that roll. All right, and... one more try. That was a five. So nope, okay. didn't they just we tried. We tried. We, tried. we tried very hard. Yeah, made it pretty serious. Very, very, very yeah. hard. All right. And that is gonna be uh Lysandros' turn. We get to the elemental now. It can't really attack anybody. Wait, no, sorry, it went before Lysandros. Yeah, it's the yeah, both 20 was weird. Yeah. Uh that is the end of its turn. So now we have uh Zindar's turn. Oh, I didn't do anything? Oh no, sorry. It did, I, I, I thought it went on its turn, but it went earlier. Sorry, I got confused. So I was thinking that it went before Lysandra. So it does. It tries to attack Callie because she, it has to, because the thing that she did to it. So uh, it it's going to turn. It have to. <laughs> um, it really wants to, though. Okay. So it's going to turn and it's going to like grab its own trident that it threw from the ground and try oh, to bring God. it down on you. So normally it could make three attacks. I'm going to say it can't make three attacks because it had to pick up its own trident to make the attack. So it's going to be one attack. And Great. it is a 23. Yeah, that hits. That sure okay. does hit. That hits you for seven piercing damage. So not the worst hit it could have been. Oh, it's got Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, do you want to taunt the giant water monster? I can make, I can, I can do what it says if it's Sonic. Okay. No. Um, all right, that is its turn, and now I'm going to say to uh, Mara Fine, what are you doing? Wait, me. You're right, Zindar, it's your turn. Sorry, <laughs> I, like, I, got, I got, that's my fault. I, was like, Lord, I even yeah, read I Zindar, know. and like, I had to <laughs> highlight it, and then I read Mara, sorry. It happens, it happens. Okay, so this thing is Fairy Fajord, uh, and it's right in front of all of us. And I want y'all to know I have a lot of stuff that I just, I think with his high enough intelligence, he knows that this is just, n makes no sense. Um, yes. <laughs> but he will take out a small little vial, shake it up a little bit, um, toss the, um, the, uh, the insides of it out onto this fire, uh, this, this fire, this water <laughs> elemental, and it's a fire bolt. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's all he can do right now. Uh, and this is at advantage because yep. of fairy fire. Uh, so this is going to be... Let's do this at... Wait. Don't be a butt. 18 to hit. 18 hits. So for nine fire... No, sorry. 13 points of fire damage to a water elemental. Of course, it makes sense. Yeah, um, it might evaporate it. Yeah, yeah. I, you know what? This doesn't say it has uh, damage uh, vulnerability to fire, but I'm going to say that it does because I threw a pretty heavy fight at y'all on the second episode. <laughs> so I will say that does 25. I'll take it. Uh, 26, I'll take it. 26 damage to it. Um, oh, yeah. I think when it hits, he goes, I didn't expect that to happen, but it did. Roll it starts it. to like it starts to scream and like it's it's boiling is what's happening. So parts of it are starting to reduce a little bit. I'll say just for the fun of 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 this, I'm going to say that you see it like reduce in size a little bit because part Ooh. of it boiled away. Um, and it looks hurt. It looks it looks. In fact, some might say it's at death's door. All right. Uh, and so wow. that, is, that is pretty good. Um, it's got rocks floating around inside it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, All the rocks are thrown. Essentially, you gave it a hot stone massage, and so it really <laughs> felt that. Um, and that is, uh, yeah, that is fun. Uh, and now, that, that is there anything else you want to do on your turn? I do not think so, because it's very fired. I don't have to do anything with the buddy I have. So I think we are good. Cool. All right. Now we, now we go to Marifine. All right, well, none of my magic abilities can do anything else. <laughs> so I actually, since he's super close, I'm going to whack him with my daggers. All right. Um, because since he's looking like he's knocking on death's door, might as well do an 
I guess, hopefully a guarantee. <laughs> um, but I do have a question. Sure. I have a hit DC and a damage thing. Do I roll both? So you roll the hit DC first. That's okay. like the attack roll. And then the damage is if you succeed, that's what you roll your damage to see how well it hits. And yeah. you get to roll two D20s because you, you have advantage. Yeah. So. Roll, your, roll your hit DC twice because you're rolling an advantage. Okay. You pick the best one. Ooh, 40 and mercy. Okay. <laughs> Let's try that again. Yeah, the first oh, one. Yeah, great. unfortunately, those both missed. So you oh. you try to swing your daggers at him, and like <gasps> it passes through the water and doesn't really do much to him. Um, I will say because you have if you have two daggers, I know that that Marfine does. If you mm -hmm. want to use your bonus action to to roll another attack, you can. You just won't get the plus five on it. So um, you can try just a hail mary, see if you roll an eighteen, and if you do, you'll hit it. Uh, I can't do reroll, huh? Oh yeah, you can. Oh, you can. Yeah, can. yeah, yeah reroll. Re so yeah, okay. re roll your advantage. Yeah, you I have. I think we have three left at this point. Four. So yeah, Four. go ahead and roll. Yeah, the dice gods hate me. All right. Yeah, go ahead and reroll twice because so. you have the advantage. So reroll the advantage, both the advantages. <laughs> you got it. Yes. Oh my god. Okay. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the, the twenty three hits. I'm glad you rolled again in case you got a critical, but you didn't. But the 23 yeah. does hit, so go ahead and roll your dagger damage. Now you roll the damage dice. Thank you, re-rolls. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, five. All right, so uh, five, so it's going to take three of that because of it's not magical. All right, and then now, if so if you want to, for your bonus action, you can make an offhand attack with your other dagger. It's okay. just not, you don't get, you don't get your modifier, so... If you roll your attack again, you'll sub just subtract five from your total. So this is like a Hail Mary. You might get an 18, but. <laughs> uh, so you will be 16, so you missed by two. So you do try Dang to it. get it, but your offhand can't quite get it. All right, that is its turn. I mean, it's your turn. Um, and now we get to the people. So I'll say that they are able to take out this one that is on the dock here. So he's good. And they take out this one over here as well, because they've been working on that one for a while and no one's been bothering him. So that's going to be that. And now we get to Callie. All right. Callie, uh, is, by the way, is Snake Friend supposed to do anything bonus wise for me, or is a Snake Friend just chilling? Not yet. He's okay. chilling unless. Um, Not yet. Unless you get hurt. Oh, okay. Oh. And it kills me. No. <laughs> it eats right. your body. No. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, cool. So Callie's going to kind of like look at her great sword and just yell loud overhead. If only I had a magical sword to help me, kind of towards the guards projected. <laughs> and then um, she's gonna swing at the thing again. Why, if only uh, you didn't hate the gods and the gods gave you gifts for things, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why city guards would have a sword, but I know who would, the gods. Uh, Sir Blacksmith would have one too. All right, um, I'm gonna attack. Uh, is 16. Nope, this is. But oh, it's eighteen, isn't it? Oh, that's right, and it's an advantage. We have an advantage. That was that's not right. the one to do it, though. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna. Do you want to? Do you want to use a reroll? I'm gonna use a reroll on that one. So do I okay. do the advantage on this again? Is yeah, I give advantage? I give advantage rerolls. Okay, great. But it, but the the damn it the the downside is you also have to roll rerolls for disadvantage too. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah, uh, those both would have hit. So go ahead and roll your damage for that one. Great. Nice. Um, so that one will be that. So whatever that is halved, and then I'm gonna s see how it's standing. It is. It is still at death's door. Death's door typically means it's less than a quarter of its health, but this had a lot of health, so it is. It is close to the end of its run, but it's not quite down yet. Come on, crit me, baby. Nope. Okay. Uh, but I did get a 19 on that one. Yeah, 19 and a 23, so, um, nice. Oh, no, uh, uh, next roll was a 19, I think? Oh, okay, sure. Well, you rolled twice, but yeah, yeah. they both hit, so right. um, just roll your damage for that. Nine plus four, 13, I think? All right, yep. do it. It's doing, this is getting pretty close. It's 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 really looking rough now, I will say that. Um, right. Uh, yeah. I'll unwavering mark it again. So with those hit, with that last hit again, I'll... Uh, do the thing, put the divot in it, snarl, and okay. we're good to go. Cool. Sounds good. Lysandros, your turn. Okay. 
Lysandros gets up and is like, all right, time to mix it up. I'm going to do something different. Ha ha, fooled you. And he's going to throw another rock. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, sling another rock. Yep. So attack at advantage. First roll is a 15. The next roll is a four. So I will take the 15 uh, plus seven. Hits. Um, so, and then obviously he was sufficiently uh, thrown off by my, my masterful feint that he gets sneak attack damage there. Not just because it was advantage. And I rolled 10, 11, 12. Uh, that is 20 damage. Isandros. Yes. <laughs> Please describe for me the death of this massive water monster. <laughs> so after he goes, ha, joking, rock, and throws it and releases his uh, sling, everything kind of like goes in slow motion. And the rock flies towards like right in the center I don't know if this thing has like a clear head or anything. It's it's got like armor stuff going on, right? It's like a watery like form inside of a piece of armor. So there's there's like a hole where like the mouth would be in it, and the rock just goes right into the middle of that hole and then just bounces around in like the weird little armor thing and goes like clonk 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 and then the water just goes and like starts to drain out of the face like it was punctured almost. And then the whole thing just starts to lose its water and its form and just collapses. All right, it is going. Congratulations, you have now bested this massive water creature. I knew you could do it. I believed in you all, all the time. I uh, as, <laughs> as As it dissipates, all of the lackey ones suddenly just like reabsorb into the water below it. So it seems like it was controlling them. And so they are going to uh, the guards who have no magic weapons because they're like minimum wage making city guards. They they are like <laughs> sitting there and they're like, maybe the cat can have given us a magic weapon. <laughs> and then uh, got a snake, got a snake on our leg, maybe a snake's magic. So they they are like they're like kind of tending to their wounded. They're helping people. They're they're like starting to make sure that civilians that were around that are being hurt by things flying are attacked. And you kind of get the idea like there were elementals all the way down like the row like coming into the town hitting things so like there's a lot of people that are hurt right now there's a lot of damage happening but the danger seems to have been abated for now and those have all faded away as the big one is fading away uh zindar is just going to kind of come to the edge a little bit and just where it was on the actual uh pier versus in the water that a puddle whatever is left he's kind of scoops some up into a vial, corks it, puts it in his bag. Okay, that's interesting. I will figure out what that means for you as we as we move forward with that. I he like is that. all about gathering and discovery. So if there is elemental water, he's going to take it to see what he can do with it. <laughs> I love it. I will figure out something between this week and next week that that, that, that you have now, the effect well, you have from that. Lysandro sees you <clears throat> doing that and goes, good thinking, and jumps down, goes over, and pulls out one of the cups from the bar that he had stashed in his robe <laughs> and just also takes a bit and goes, cheers. Okay. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Make a constitution saving throw for no. me. Okay. See, I'm trying to do silent, uh, <laughs> trying to do science and Lysandra is trying to get drunk. <laughs> ah, I'm just here to have a good time, you know? Saving throw, <laughs> right? Eight. Constitution. Yeah. Yeah. Oh boy, that's a that's a five. Okay, I'm just gonna say take uh just take like ten points of damage from yeah, like, points. Wait, 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 can I tell you what hap what I think happens? Yes, please do. I go, yeah, why not? And I take a cup and I take a big swig, and then I go, ow, crap, there was a rock in there. <laughs> I hate this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, you chip a tooth. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, so y'all have bested the <laughs> massive water elemental, and as you as you stop to catch your breath, as you start to relax, Callie, you notice watching from the pier the same black cat that you previously saw. Um, where did it go? You see. Where are you, cat? There it is. 
You see the same black cat that you saw earlier in the evening that walked underneath Zendar's chair and disappeared behind the chair leg as it went on. You see a black cat with a piercingly blue set of eyes. And I want you to roll a history check for me. All right. Historia. 17. Mm. The last time you remember seeing this exact cat was sitting on the lap of Kia the Sage outside the city of Melitus as she told you about Phoenix mm. and what he was planning on doing. And prior to sending you to the island where you saved the Nyxborn who was being held captive by the three hags, she mentioned that as a result of what Phoenix was doing to Clothis, something got released from the space in the underworld where the Titans were being held. Oh, that's right. And that's where we're going to end tonight's session. Right. Well, things like, feels like we broke something. <laughs> you didn't break something. We did. Who's we? <laughs> well, you, you and your god, possibly. Yeah. Uh, that's between you and your god. Um, but yeah, that is uh, that is tonight's session, y'all. I I knew that was a really hard combat, and I I threw it at you, and I I tried to like mitigate, but like. There were some times where I was like, oh no, this might not, I, was, I actually, I was, okay. Um, that was very, very fun to watch play out. I love watching this gang and seeing what y'all are doing, which is very fun. Uh, let's go ahead and go around the table and say where the folks at home can find you. Uh, let's go in the reverse order. I think I remember the reverse order we came in on. So let's start with Callie. Hello, oh, everyone. Ashley. You're good. <laughs> I see the name is a name. Hey everyone, I'm Ashlyn. This is my cat. Lucy, you see her all the time. I think she just wants to say hello, so we're going to get it out of the way now. This is Lucy. She's very old. No. Um, you can find me on Instagram as Rar. It's Ashlyn. You can find me on Twitter as Ashlyn Rose. Uh, if you might check out, I do a lot of voiceover stuff. You can check out my demos and all that jazz at ashlynrose.com. If you want to see anything D&D related, uh, we actually just worked on a big project at the Command Zone, me and Jordan, um, for the Magic the Gathering set. That was related to Dungeons and Dragons. Um, and we did a whole little skit based on if D&D characters played Magic the Gathering. And it was really fun. So check that out at the Command Zone on YouTube. And, and you might see a, a, another familiar face in it if you watch it. So. Yes. You mean, you, mean you mean Garov? <laughs> yes. And Riley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's lovely. Uh, Jordan, Jordan, where can the folks find you? Hi, everybody. My name is Jordan Pridgen, and you can find me on Twitter at Jordan Pidgeon. And uh, then also the same Command Zone stuff. Uh, if you like Magic the Gathering and Commander, go check out their content. I make ads for them, which, you know, we try to make fun, <laughs> but they're ads, so. <laughs> yep. And that's me. And also <laughs> check out other things on, uh, check out some of the backlog of Saving Throw uh, show stuff. I'm on a bunch of the other shows there, uh, like Wild Cards, which there are a, a bunch of seasons of you can go check out. So those are fun. Thank you. Uh, Omega, where can we find you? You can find me many places at Critical Bard, Critical Bard across all social media channels. Some things that are coming up for me. What is today? Wednesday? Cool. Uh, on Fridays, you can catch me over on Rock Punch ATL for Tampa, which is a D&D uh, campaign using the Islands of Sina Una uh, setting, which is inspired by pre-colonial Filipino culture. On Saturdays on my channel, uh, Let's Get Wild Mount is a show that I produce and play in, um, which is using Critical Role's uh, Wild Mount setting. On Sundays, over on twitch.tv slash INDG, I am the DM of Dungeons and Durags, which is just an all-black uh, D&D campaign, just all about the culture as much as we want it to be. Uh, on Mondays, I am in a Curse of Strike campaign with Realmsmith, uh, playing a satyr druid, which is a lot of fun. All the satyr, satyr rep. Uh, and and uh you know a certain things happening very soon that's been announced uh i am hold on hold on hold the front door uh <laughs> i am a part of a game with saving throw show for gen con i'm Woo! going to be playing 
Mysterium, a Savage World uh, one shot inspired by the board game Mysterium. Oh, I believe yeah. it is uh, the 16th at 10 a.m. Pacific time. And I, I am I, literally. I believe, oh, go ahead. I, I believe that that you guys are your characters are all members of like the the Horace Duncombe Society mm-hmm. for Psychical Studies. Well, I was Horace Duncombe. Oh, we heard. We heard. <laughs> <laughs> we are ready. Uh, I am literally going to make my character tonight. So, yeah. And then <laughs> other things, just just watch my socials. I do uh, way too much in, in the best of ways. Uh, that's me. I think I, I think that's it. I think that's it. It might not be it. All right. And Joy, where can we find you? You can find me everywhere on all social medias at Curious Joy. And... I don't really have any projects coming up, but I will be playing Final Fantasy IV Pixel Remastered this weekend. <laughs> nice. nice. It's one of my favorite Final Fantasy IV games, by the way. I, four I, was like the, like the first one I definitely played as a kid, and then I, six is my favorite, but four is a Yeah, favorite. six is, yeah. I mean, you know my backstory. <laughs> six is my all time yeah, six is, six is six my, my all-time favorite. favorite but like four i never really liked the 3d models so i've only played it when it was on snes because i could not i was like no 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 so when they announced it, i was like it is time for me to yeah. see cecil again i must yes. see him again <laughs> oh oh and one last thing i forgot to say uh i am on new pantheon on this channel oh, i should yeah. probably mention that i'm a main character over there go watch <laughs> me play a very very gay not that gay but gay enough um African um, spider boy, basically. Yeah. Yes. Love it. <laughs> All right. And I am Riley Silverman. You can find me on Twitter at Riley J Silverman and Instagram at Riley Silverman. I actually have a few this week myself. I don't normally have this many, but uh, this coming Saturday, I am doing a guest appearance on uh, the Fort Nerd uh, Quest for the Cure fundraiser. So I'm playing D and D with them on. It's, I think it's 5 p.m. Pacific time. Might be eight. Eastern, uh, that's how it works out. I think I think it's five Pacific time. So check that out. They're tweeting about it. I'll be tweeting about it as well. Uh, and also uh, n- next Tuesday, I speaking of of uh, New Pantheon, uh, I am doing a show on Hyper RPG that is actually play that's demoing uh, New Pantheon's GM Stephen Pope's role playing game Queers, which is based on the manga. And we are doing a debut of that. It's a really really stacked lineup. It's actually got lots of friends of the channel on. That's myself. You've got Abria on there. You've got Terry on there. You've got Xander on there. Uh, so and uh, obviously Malika from hyper rpg so that is going to be a really really fun show to be a part of really hope not forgetting somebody that's going to be i'm so excited to be part of that show so that'll be next tuesday on hyper rpg i believe it's at 8 p.m might be at seven anyway they're tweeting about it you'll find out uh and that's happening and so i'm very excited for steven this game is gonna be really fun to play i'm looking forward to diving into it it's really fun to play a friend's game like this and then next friday uh ripley improv is is debuting season two of heartbeats the improvised medical drama that i am a part of oh and the thing last week that i could not mention last week but i can now is i am a voice of a character on the upcoming season there's a new audio podcast that is a vampire the masquerade scripted audio drama and i I am playing a very, very fun character that I was really excited to sink my teeth into. So What's your clan? Out, it, uh, I can't say because I am under an NDA for things like that. Uh, <laughs> but it is it is called uh, Port Saga is the name of the show. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm very, very excited. It's also a clan that I normally wouldn't have played myself, but I love the character they wrote for me. So it's very, very fun. Well, they didn't write for me, but I get to play. Uh, and actually, I want to say a thanks to uh, to a friend of the show, a friend of the channel, Ryan Omega, who recommended me for that, that part because they were looking for to expand the the normal ideas of who they would cast for stuff. And Ryan recommended me and I got the part and it was great. So uh, that's gonna be called Port Saga. It should be up pretty soon. This week or next week, episode one should be out. There's a trailer for it already, but it's a scripted vampire murder mystery. And I am I am very excited to have people hear it because it's pretty cool. Uh, so that is all for me, I believe. Uh, I wanna remind you, of course, you mentioned New Pantheon. We also wanna remind you that Owlbear Soup returns this Sunday at 2 p.m. Pacific with a special guest. And of course, use the link that Dom, the birthday boy, is going to drop in chat right now to uh, do the use the use the use Gen Code uh, thing right now to get info for the Gen Con tickets that you can get through Saving Throw Show. As Omega just mentioned, we have several Saving Throw Gen Con shows happening, so check those out. And I think that is everything. That is a pretty stacked end of show. So you all have a great night, and let's let our our late night friends go to bed. <laughs> so we will talk to you later. <laughs> <laughs>